Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to this week's bonus episode of the Prep Athletics Podcast. I just got back from the Final Four a few days ago, and it was my first one ever, and just wanted to kind of give uh, my recap on the experience and uh, the three days I was there. So I flew down on Saturday morning, and the reason I went is Purdue made us to the Final Four, and as you guys have known from you know working for Prep Athletics and having them on the podcast, my cousin Brad Miller played for Purdue back from 94 to 98, and he's one of the all-time greats there. So when Purdue got in, I texted him, I said, hey man, you got good tickets? He said he did. He said he had a space for me to crash. I was in. So I booked my ticket, uh, left Denver Saturday morning on a Southwest flight straight to Phoenix, and the flight was about half full of Purdue fans. And that's one of the things I, I really noticed about this weekend was the kind of the mix of fans from each school. Number one was definitely Purdue. Number two would be UConn. Three would be actually number two would be NC State. They really brought it pretty hard, especially with their miracle run uh, they had, especially being at an 11 seed. Purdue would be number three in Alabama. Eh, they showed up. Uh, <laughs> There's probably fourth in line of people uh, there to support their team. They'd probably show up more for their football um, football games and, and bowls, but uh, they were they were pretty lacking there for this. So that was interesting. Um, before we got to the game on Saturday, I went with Brad and uh, in our party to a Purdue bar right next to the stadium, and it was packed. I mean, you couldn't move around. Be a terrible place to be a waitress or a waiter in that situation. Ironically, it was a Purdue bar, and one of the waiters was wearing an NC State jersey, which I wanted to say, hey, man, that's going to affect your tips tonight. Like, maybe just take that off and wear the T-shirt underneath. But anyway, um, Brad was treated like a beetle, you know, signing autographs, taking pictures, stopping traffic. Um, it was pretty cool to be around that, and he got to hook up with a lot of other Purdue players too, like Etwan Moore, Chad Austin, Brian Cardinal, Mike Robertson. So we got to sit in that section at the game, which is pretty neat. But we left the bar, got to see you know Jim Beheim, um, uh, a couple others on uh, TV for the ACC Network. Getting inside was jam packed. Uh, all the Purdue stuff had already sold out at the vendors we went to because the most Purdue fans were there. And finally got to our seats. There were great seats behind the bench, about 25 rows up. Great angle of the court, and um, it was neat. I mean, that's that's the biggest crowd I've ever been in in my life. I think Monday night's uh, crowd was 74,000, and that was the third largest crowd ever witnessed a national championship game. And it was neat. It was in a stadium. I thought it'd be a bad experience being in a big stadium. Having good seats helped. I think even if you, even if you were in the high seats, it still would have been pretty enjoyable. Because one thing I also noticed was everyone there was pretty loose, excited to be there, having fun. Um, it seems like Purdue fans are having a lot of fun, NC State fans. Alabama, like I said earlier, kind of okay to be there. UConn fans had been there the year before, so I don't know if it was as exciting for them. But I did have some celebrity sightings there, too. I saw Shaq. You can see the uh, the um, the announcers like Charles Barkley, Kenny Smith, Ernie, Jay Wright. You can see them on the other side of the stadium. I saw Bill Murray there, Drew Brees, probably the two big names associated at each school. Uh, Gene Cady was there, Danny Green, he walked by. So, um, yeah, and, and Purdue won and UConn won, and Saturday night was great because we knew, uh, as Purdue fans, we had a chance to make it to the to a national championship on Monday. So we stayed out late that night. Next day, I went to my prep school teammate's house, Dan Peterson. He's the head coach of Chaparral High School down there in Scottsdale. And once again, prep school connection, right? Stayed with my prep school brother, uh, hung out with his family, and they had a party there, and... Um, mainly for the women's national championship game, which we watched and turns out a lot of people watched too and got to see Caitlin Clark play. That was great. And then Monday, uh, who do I see who comes over to Dan's house while he's at work, but Cade Lemke head coach of Blue Ridge school. So Cade and I are good friends. We've worked together with a lot of kids at Blue Ridge school and we hung out in Phoenix for an hour. Right. So that was great. That night to the game, it was a little bit smoother getting in. We got there probably 20 minutes before tip off and got right in um, same seats as the night before, got to hear the national anthem, got to see a Navajo sing it, which was pretty cool. Since one of my best friends, Lawrence Yazzie, who's also been on the podcast, who was also my prep school roommate, um, it's from Arizona and he was proud to have Native Americans represented 
for the national championship game, and that was pretty cool. And Purdue lost, right, which was not good, but you could slowly see Connecticut uh, throughout the game just putting too much pressure on the guards. Edie played great both games. He was dominant against D.J. Burns for NC State. He was dominant against Klingon, but the other other teammates just didn't pick it up. And the better team won. And now, you know, we'll see if UConn has a dynasty. Two in a row is pretty many dynasty. Um, so they're doing pretty good with that. So it was a tough loss. You could feel the fun, jovial environment in there. Um, Purdue fans got quieter and quieter as the night went on. But still, if you look at it with gratitude, it's amazing they made it there. It was still a good time. Once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, so that was pretty great. So my main takeaways were it was a lot of fun, especially if there's a team in it you're cheering for, right? I don't know how much fun it'd be to go to the Final Four if you're not cheering for a specific team. It'd still be fun, but when there are stakes, stakes up, you know, for a championship, it makes it more fun. Two, good mood all around, right? And three, it was great to see basketball royalty like, you know, Bayheim, Jim Calhoun, Shaq, Barkley, Jay Wright, you know, Danny Hurley now is in that conversation. Um, Zach Eady, two-time player of the year. It was good to see all that in person. Good to spend it with family. Good to hang out with prep school buddies. And um, so, yeah. So, will I go again? Yeah, if a good team's in that, that we're, you know, our family is, has connections to, such as West Virginia and Air Force maybe one day, if things go well, if Purdue goes back, um, we'll probably do it again. So, anyway, that is my review of my first Final Four. It was excellent. And if it comes to a town near you, check it out. Also, I see next year um, they've got first round games and second round games already announced. Try to check those out as well. You can't go wrong. There's never been a bad NCAA tournament. Thanks so much for tuning in. See you next time.